Today we conclude our journey of having a closer look at classes and objects. If you remember what we covered in this chapter is the static class members, static um, uh, fields and methods. We also covered overloading methods and constructors. We covered uh, how to pass objects as arguments and how to use objects as a return data type for methods. Uh, we also discussed um, the toString method, the equals method, how to copy using methods and constructors, and introduced aggregation and talked about the issues that could occur uh, with aggregation and how to avoid them by copying um, the objects as we pass them or return them um, uh, from methods and back from methods or constructors or so on. Um, today we are going to cover three, um, two or three discrete topics just to conclude that um, close look at classes and objects. So if you um, look here, the first thing that we are going to cover is the this keyword. And this keyword is something that we have already covered before, right? So we said this keyword is very useful to, um, to avoid shadowing, right? So if you remember, we said that if you have a method, all right, like set feed, for example, and here, in this method, you would like to have a to set the variable or the field feet to um, to the value feet. So here, what is confusing is that both of them share the same um, the same variable name. So what you want to do is to tell Java that one of them is the is the variable. Um, sorry, one of them is the field, which is this one. And the other is that variable here. All right. So this to tell the difference and to tell Java um, which one is which, you would need to include the this keyword um, in, before the the field, so Java knows that this is the field that is not going to be shadowed. And by saying shadowed is that if you remove this dot, feed is equal to feed. It's just going to assign this one to itself. So it's going to think that this is the closest one. And instead of thinking that this is the field that is up in the um, field definition of a class. So that's that's the confusing part that you would need to avoid. Um, so that's, that's one use that we are familiar with of how to use this and why to use this. The other thing that we haven't covered before is that this could be used to call a constructor within another constructor. So you could call a constructor and then this constructor will delegate the process of creating the object to another constructor defined in the class all right so to see this example i'm going to um, go to the rectangle class again all right so here in our rectangle class um, let's say first the example that we just gave let's say we have the rectangle we have rectangle that takes width and length and then we have the set width, set length, get width, get length, and get area. And here you will notice that with the set length, I used len and length for the field name. So this way there is no confusion, no problem here. However, for width, you say this dot width is equal to width, that resolves the issue. So if I use 120 and then get width, get length, that would work. All right, so compile. And let's go rectangle demo here. There we go. So I set it to 120, the width is 100, length is 20, and then the area is 2000. All right, now imagine I go here and remove that part here, this, and I say just say width is equal to width. All right, so in this case, if I compile and run, what I get is that did not work as intended, right? So width is equal to width. Mm. Oh, okay, because we did not use, um, because we are using the constructor, the constructor has nothing to do with this set width and set length. However, what I could do is, let's say I say here set width, and that's actually a good practice to use set width in your constructor to do that process for you. So here set width and I pass this and set length and I pass L. 
all right so in this case w will go to set width which we go and call this method and ask this method to do the the work for you so now if i run this there we go here is the problem i call the constructor with 120 w is 100 l is 20 set width with 100 set length length with 20. now set width with 100 goes here assigns 100 which is in w to width and then i say width is equal to width my intention is that this width will be equal to this width which is make it going to make it 100 is, width is equal to 100. but what happens is that width stays zero right so in this case width did not really get assigned right because what really happens is that this variable width was set to be equal to itself which is 100 so that width is 100 however this width did not um, get um, uh, altered or changed and that's why width here stayed as a variable that is not initialized just zero so that is the problem on the other hand the length didn't create that problem because there is no shadowing here now the other thing that we were talking about is that we could use this to call a method to call a constructor within a constructor so here I'm going to do to overload constructors define a new constructor that is going to take a single input w all right, so here I'm assuming that, uh, and let's fix that one here. This is equal. This dot width, all right. So um, back to the constructor. I'm assuming that if I call a rectangle constructor with a single input, I'm go going to assume that this is the w, and the length is going to be hard coded to be ten. So that's that's an assumption. You could tell people that if you provide the single value, I'm just going to assume that one of the dimensions is ten, and that's perfectly fine. So I go back here and provide one value. So what's going to happen is that this is going to go and call that constructor with w is equal to 100. Then this constructor is going to call this with 110, which is going to search for other constructors that matches the signature, which is this one. And it's going to run that constructor. Now to make this visible for you i'm going to print statements that says here for example single uh, variable constructor and then i'm going to um i'm going to show you why why this is giving an error here it's pretty good i'm glad i did that and here uh this is a two variables constructor all right now this is giving an error if you hover over it it's going to call you to tell you that call to this must be the first statement in constructor and that's something you need to remember if you're going to use this keyword to call another constructor it has to be the first line in that constructor all right so here i'm going to do it this way all right so let's run this and it's going to be very interesting the way it's printing that because it's going to call that which go and print this first and then it's going to print this so compile run you see what happened so here i call r is equal to new rectangle with 100 it goes here sets w to 100 calls this method uh, constructor 110 goes here maps to this one signature prints two variables constructor construct the object with set width set length then it goes back and prints single variable constructor then we go back here and it prints get width get length 110 1000 so that's that's the um the part talking about this and how to use it for either to prevent for either printing shadowing um preventing shadowing or to call another constructor within a constructor and remember if you're going to use it to um, call a constructor it has to be the first line in your constructor